the water damage that you saw at the end of part one of this video. That's where it all was. And yeah, I have a shelf in the way, but it's honestly not hiding anything. But most of the water damage was all that corner there. Kind of through the floor, or not the floor, but the wall there. The flooring under this shelf was shot. Um, we were able to replace everything. We had insulation. We had the, um, I never can remember the name of it, but the wood that lines these RVs, at most RVs, um, on the inner wall. We had a lot of that. So all of that was completely replaced through there. Um, put all new flooring in. Had to put some extra, extra braces. That flooring is actually stronger than what it was originally. And kind of down through there. All that's been replaced. Um, Ed did a very good professional job on it. So we were able to overcome that. It, it did scare us when we first saw it. It was just kind of a shock. And had to kind of back up, regroup. So all of that came first before we even started doing anything because we wanted to make sure this RV was still, you know, at right now we're not planning on pulling it a whole lot, but this RV is very much, you know, you can pull it, do anything you can with any other RV now. That's what we were scared of. It was so weak on the back. Um, a bump could have destroyed that and we didn't catch it when we bought it. I don't know what we would have done if we'd known that was there. Would we have bought this? I don't know. It would have had to have been something we'd have had to talk about, thought about, that kind of stuff. But, yep, it's fixed, taken care of, no issues. This will just show you kind of what all has come out of this RV with this restoration. Getting ready to haul it off. stuff we're keeping and kind of repurposing some things. Just kind of a update here in the middle of the remodel. It's a 2007 Montana fifth wheel. Um, it's the P PFK something that's got the bunk room in the back, which that's my office, which technically the renovation part's done. Just um, a lot of, we're storing a lot of things back there until everything else is done, so I'm not going to show it yet. This can be the food pantry, which right now is the tool and paint supplies pantry. The doors are all off. Um, as you can see, I started primering, but I couldn't get the doors off. I needed Ed's help. Uh, this had the dinette in there. I finally got Ed talked in to let me get rid of it because I'm going to do something completely different. So obviously got some more priming to do. Same thing. All the cabinet doors, all that are off. Those will actually get painted outside. Um instead of in here. All the window treatments are gone. I'm seeing a lot of people on the forums ask, how did, were cut holes covered? How did people do that? Cause we're gonna be doing, um, I don't know what I'm gonna have in here. We may have window or uh, curtains. I haven't decided. The bedroom's gonna have blackout blinds. I do not like the day night blinds, the double roller system, not for me. These windows are so tinted. I just, I don't know. I'm, I wanna see out my windows. I don't like those, those day shades. So, um, but to get rid of these holes, it, it's honestly not a problem. Uh, the first thing I do to all the walls is use crud cutter. I uh, was using TSP. That stuff's evil. It ate my nails up. Um, it's just really bad. So I switched to crud cutter. Huge difference. Much easier. I spray it on. Um, if, the, if it's really bad, like as soon as you spray it on, you see dark brown like dripping, then I scrub it. Um, wipe that down. Then I go ahead and do another just spray and wipe down and the... Kills adhesion, I think that's the key to it, is it's beautiful. It, it's um, adhering beautifully, but I do the crud cutter cleaning first. It may seem backwards, but I don't want to sand on a bunch of grime and oils and all that stuff. So everything's been clean. Now I sand these down to where they're almost smooth, where you can't feel them. You can still feel this one. I'll actually go in with some putty, fill that, let it dry, then start sanding again. If they need to be taken down some more, I'll keep sanding until I get those really smooth. Um, that's the holes from the, the shades and all that, which you can see where I've sanded these down. I haven't done anything except sand and, of course, i got a broom right in the way. And you can hardly feel the holes at all there now. So that's how I'm doing that. But, yeah, these, these walls that don't have, um, I mean, there's a little bit of texture, not much. They're crud cutter. Um, just a test I did. This is where the entertainment center was and we pulled it. 
I haven't hadn't cleaned these walls. I was painting over there on the slide and just did a dab here just to kind of see how it's stuck. Like I said, this wall hadn't been cleaned. Entertainment center was here, so it shouldn't have been too dirty, but that kills adhesion sticks. Um, I wish I'd known about this a long time ago. I did a, a modular home. I wish I'd known about kills adhesion. It's expensive, but it's worth every penny. I've done the whole back bunk room. You can see where I've done part of the slide here, even underneath over there. Uh, the whole bedroom's done as far as painted and primed. Um, there's the hallway where I ended my priming. That was one gallon of adhesion. I'm on my second gallon, uh, paid $47.50 a gallon so yeah i'll have a hundred dollars hundred dollars into my primer but if it makes the paint stick and look good it's worth every penny so just kind of a midway i guess you'd call it so this is kind of the final of the rv which it's never final we've lots more to do but to where we could actually live in it and stay in it um try and show you some of the things there's a backsplash and I kind of went over the primer and the paint and all that, but the primer and the paint has held up beautifully. We've been actually living in this RV for about a month doing daily stuff and the white paint, it's its just, yeah, we, we're happy with it. And did a kind of a accent wall and that's actually real wood. That's where the inner, that big entertainment center was. And that was all pulled out. We left that shelf. So that's got storage like Cleaning supplies, crock pots up on the top. The uh, TV, which is right there, will actually be on a swing out mount. That'll go there. So this is kind of the coffee bar. Someone to store the kitchen egg. We put aid, the kitchen aid, put in a uh, electric fireplace. And that thing really does put out some heat, which in Florida, we really do not need that right now. More storage. Trash can's not really in a spot I'd like. You'd think it'd go here, which there's the kitchen counter and we're eventually going to do another sink and the uh, faucet but we just haven't gotten to that yet and cabinets all there eventually i'll get some more kind of decoration things up there but ed took this countertop from a shelf out of the uh, bunk room and made that so now i have a an extension which that has really helped a lot got the couch there and eventually I'm going to find, I still haven't found the table I want. I want kind of a vintage looking table with fold down leaves where it can be out of the way, but used. So right now we're kind of dealing with plastic tables. It's kind of showing you more how everything turned out. Still um, need to put some kind of grate down there. I haven't got that yet. The bunkhouse turned out real good. Um, for my desk, he actually... We were gonna, we were looking at three and four hundred dollar desks and all this. He came up with the idea, use the uh, rails from the bunks. That's a black banquet folding table for like fifty bucks at Walmart or you know Lowe's, those kind of stores. It rests up on there. It can be screwed down. All my plugs and wiring are underneath. But got my video editing set up there. Then just uh, went with a Lowe's shelf, more practical, a lot cheaper. Not getting into the whole Pinterest thing, but there's all the camera gear, backdrops, props, lights, all that's stored in there. This, just kind of a blank area for right now. I'm going to put a shelf up there, kind of have a charging station there. The plans. And then... We haven't done anything to the bathroom. So we're just going to skip right on there. But then the bedroom went really basic. Uh, that's a, a queen. It's a, um, it's the big queen mattress. So it kind of fits weird. Can't really make the bed like you're supposed to, the way it fits over the platform. We may change that. Closet. I'm not putting up curtains or a door. Uh, Mishka, the Malinois, likes to lay back in that corner on the left side. So kind of keeps her out of the way and not always on the bed. The dresser turned out really, really nice. But that's pretty much the after. We're extremely happy with it. Still lots more we want to do. We want to do the bathroom. The This carpeting, eventually want to get that replaced. The steps, those are going to actually be, um, we're going to kind of tear those out because they're kind of starting to show their age. 
it's going to be like an old barn wood step just for those two steps and then we'll eventually get the carpeting done and obviously all new flooring in the kitchen love this flooring easy to clean it was easy to go in and it's really done well the slide a lot of people said the slide will scratch it we've had the slide in and out it's not phased the floor at all